Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem one from the Top Coder SRM 753 contest entitled Karim Javada. Karim Javada is one of the most careless coders in his university. He never knows what to type, and he relies on his friends to tell him when he's wrong. Here is how he types a letter of a command into the computer. Number one, he types the letter A and looks at his friend. If that is the right letter, the friend nods and Karim moves on to typing the next letter. Number two, if the friend shook his head, meaning that A was not the correct letter, Karim presses backspace to erase the A and he types B instead. Then he looks at his friend again. Number three, if B wasn't correct either, he will press backspace to erase it and type C, and so on through the whole alphabet. You are given the text. Determine the number of keystrokes Karim will perform while typing his text. Both letters and backspaces count as strokes. And the constraints of this problem are given that the length of our string text will be between 1 and 50, and all of the characters in text will be between uh, A and Z, the lowercase letters. So let's take a look at some of the examples that TopCoder pr provided us with uh, to see how to solve this problem. So here are four of the examples. We can see that we're given the strings individually. So the first string is three A's. The second string is one D. The third is bad, and the fourth is top coder. And the answers for these, the number of keystrokes that uh, Karim will have to type are as follows, 3, 7, 11, and 184. And the reason for this is pretty straightforward if we just walk through uh, the steps that Karim will take. So for the first example here, AAA, uh, basically what's going to end up happening is Karim is going to type A, look at his friend, and his friend will say that's correct, or will nod his head uh, to verify that it's correct. And then Karim will go on to the next letter, type A again, and that will repeat three times until uh, the text is completed, so that will take three keystrokes in total. Uh, for D, it gets a little more interesting. Uh, Karim will type A, um, and then look at his friend. His friend will shake his head, so then uh, they'll delete or backspace the A, then type B, and that will continue um, where you backspace and then type a new character until you get the correct uh, character. Uh, so this involves basically typing all the characters A, B, C, and D plus three deletes, every, uh, a delete for every sort of non-first uh, character. Uh, so we end up, if you count all of these, with seven. Then for the third example, bad, we do the same thing, but we're going to have to do this uh, with uh, multiple characters. So for the first character, uh, we don't have an A, so we're going to type A, then delete, and then B. Then we move on to the second character, we're going to type A, and then we move on to the third character, which we will type uh, A, B, C, D. And if we count this all up, we end up with 11 keystrokes. And I'm not going to go through top coder because that would be uh, a little bit too uh, much keystrokes to put on the screen, but I think by now you should get the idea. Um, so the question is how to solve this, and it's pretty straightforward as long as we notice a pattern. So if you want to try and figure that out that pattern right now, pause the video and unpause it when you've spent enough time thinking about it or you've figured it out, um, but I'll give you a second to do that. And the pattern is that we need to notice that for the character A, we're always going to have just one keystroke. So if we look at the first example, because we don't have to do any deletions or backspaces, we don't end up with any sort of extra keystrokes. And then the second thing we have to notice is that for every character after A, um, there's always two keystrokes. So you can see faintly I have here basically one press of the delete button to get rid of whatever character is currently there, and then uh, another keystroke for the new character. And so basically we can formalize this or formulaize this into a formula uh, as follows. So basically two times the uh, integer value of our lowercase character, uh, C for character, minus the character A. And depending on the language, we might need to convert this to an integer or it might just happen automatically. And uh, so for basically, if, we, if our character is B, B minus A is going to give us 1, which will uh, multiplied by 2 will give us two keystrokes, and then we do a plus 1 uh, for A. So if our character is A, A minus A will just give us 0, and this term will cancel out, so we'll just end up with one keystroke. And basically what we have to do is just loop through our string, and for every character, compute this formula, and then keep a running sum and return that uh, from our function. So it's a pretty straightforward problem, uh, and now we're going to look at four different solutions from four different languages. 
So first is our Java solution. This is sort of the classic imperative way that you would approach this problem. So you can see here we have our function how long. It takes a single parameter uh, text, which is a string, and then we're going to output a single return value, which is our integer. And so we declare a local integer, the answer, and set it equal to zero. And then we have an enhanced for loop. The enhanced for loop was added in Java 5. Um, and we're going to loop through all the characters in our string. In order to do that, you have to make the call to the two car array method on our string. And then for each character C, we just plug it into that formula, two times C minus A plus one, and this will automatically give us that sort of delta that we need without having to explicitly convert. And once we finish this enhanced for loop, we just return answer and we're good to go. Uh, so if we use a little bit of a more functional way to solve this using Java 8 streams, uh, we can do the following. Uh, we can just, in a single line, I've sort of broken it because uh, this is a standard way when sort of using these lambdas and uh, these chaining methods, you return text.cars. This will return uh, a stream of characters from our string. And then we can make a call to the reduce method and pass it uh, zero for the initial value of the number of keystrokes and then a lambda, uh, which takes basically two parameters. So this is a binary operator. The A is the running sum and the B is the current character that we're looking at. So uh, we basically do A plus two times B minus A. Once again, we can just plug this in here, plus one, and we are good to go. Uh, so that's a neat way to solve this problem uh, with a little bit more modern techniques and a little bit more functional. Moving on to the Python solution. Python, as usual, is very concise. Uh, this is pretty functional as well. In a single line, we're just, in, just making use of the sum function and a generator expression uh, with the formula that we worked out. Note that you have to, in order to convert a character into an in, the corresponding integer value, um, you need to make a call to the ORD method. Um, but using this, we can use the same formula and our generator expression and uh, get the sum of all this to return the number of keystrokes. Moving on to our C++ solution. Here we're making use, use of the accumulate function, which is basically the equivalent of the reduce in Java and the sum in Python. And here we're passing it the begin and pass the last element iterators uh, for our string text passing the initial value for the third uh, parameter, which is going to be zero, and then passing it a lambda as well, which is going to perform basically the uh, summation that we saw in both the previous Python and Java solution. And note that because TopCoder only has C++11, we can't use generic lambdas uh, where we would get to use auto here. You have to explicitly declare the types of uh, your binary operator or your lambda here. And last but not least, we have our Haskell solution. Uh, so Haskell becoming, as I've mentioned in previous videos, one of my favorite languages. Um, here in the type signature on the first line, uh, it is basically telling us that the parameters, which are the all of the um, elements uh, mentioned here that are not the last one. So we only have one parameter in this case, which is our string, and then we have a single return value, which is the integer. And walking through this from the end, basically, we make a call to the map function, which is going to turn our string, which is basically an array of characters, into an array or a list of integers. And so basically, we're making a call very similar to Python. We have this ORD function. Uh, we pass it C and we pass it A. We take the difference, multiply it by 2, and add 1. And uh, we're mapping, we're, and this is a lambda here that we're passing to our map function as the first parameter. And then we pass S, which is our string, uh, as the second parameter. And this is going to return us an array of integers. And then from there, all we need to do is make a call to the uh, reduce function in Haskell, which is called fold L and pass it. Uh, this is basically a brief lambda. It's called a section. You can just give it the operator, and it's the equivalent of uh, just summing all the elements up. And the zero here is the initial value. Uh, so this will give us our answer. And there's a slightly different solution in Haskell, which basically avoids the uh, map function here and just puts everything in a lambda that we pass to the fold L function. So that's what this looks like below. It's what looks like three characters shorter. Um, I prefer the first one because it's more readable. It sort of splits the summing and the transforming that's happening here. Um, but this also works. So you can see here we're making a call to fold L. Uh, the last parameter is SR string. The second last parameter is the initial value similar to the zero here. And then the sec or the first parameter is our lambda, which takes, uh, it's a binary operator now, whereas here this was a unary operator. 
And it's, uh, as we saw in both the Java and the C++ solution, it's uh, A is our running sum. We add 2 times ORD B minus ORD A plus 1, and that will give us our solution. So the last thing to talk about is the time complexity for this problem, which is pretty straightforward because we're only looping through uh, the string once. So the time complexity of this problem is going to be linear in the length of our string. This video is brought to you by TopCoder. Make sure to check out their contests and their practice problems on www.topcoder.com. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.